1919 was an auspicious year in history. The First World War ended, ushering a drastic change in the world order. The Philippine Islands had been a U.S. territory for two decades and was promised independence under the Jones Law of 1916. Progressive reformers saw the country and its people as a major target for modernization, and education was its main weapon. Seven forward-looking Filipinas came together in 1919 to create a school where young women could gain the knowledge and skills that would make them modern women. Paz Marquez Benitez was the first president of the Philippine Women's College. Jose Abad Santos was its first chairman of the Board of Trustees. Francisca Tirona Benitez was the second president and with her husband, Dean Conrado, guided the school from a house on A. Flores Street to its iconic Taft Avenue campus. In 1932, the college became a university, making PWU the first university for women in Asia founded by Asians. It provided a space where innovations in education flourished and young people were encouraged to be the best that they could be. For over 100 years, the Philippine Women's University has been known as a leader in quality education. In 1934, PWU moved into its main campus on Taft Avenue, and since the 1970s has been co-educational. Located in the heart of Metro Manila, it is easily accessible by public transport and surrounded by affordable housing. Today's PWU offers undergraduate and graduate courses in several fields of study. Its business and management programs are responsive to the needs of industry, using evolving technology for global competence. PWU graduates excel in arts and sciences, education, social work, and diplomacy. Its fine arts and music programs have produced outstanding graduates through a holistic education that treasures heritage as well as excellence. PWU has pioneered in fields such as food science, nutrition and dietetics, medical technology, pharmacy, and nursing. PWU continues to play an essential role in producing graduates who possess the skills that make them competitive in the country and anywhere in the world. the PW Doctors of Hospitality Management entitled Entrepreneurial Strate Strategies and Tools for Sustainable Food Business Operations in the Now Normal. To start with the program proper, let us all pause for a while for our opening prayer to be followed by the singing of the Philippine National Anthem.
Alhamdulillah min ash-shaytanir rajim bismillahirrahmanirrahim faqala rabbukum ud'uni astaghfir lakum amin ya rabbal alamin alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin arrahmanir rahim maliki yawmiddin iyyaka na'budu wa iyyaka nasta'in ihdina siratal mustaqim siratal ladzina an'amta 'alaihim ghairil maghdubi 'alaihim waladdallin amin Allahumma ajma shamalal muslimin wa kristiyan wa lumad bi madinat dabab وسلم دائما مجتمعنا هذا بسلم والأمن والتقدم في بلدنا هذا آمين يا رب العالمين ربنا لا تجيغ قلوبنا بعد جهل تنوهب لنا من لدن رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب ربنا إنك أنت الوهاب ربنا تنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وصلى الله على خير خلقه سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم سبحان ربك رب العزة ما يسيبون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين آمين يا رب العالمين In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen Our most gracious Heavenly Father We come to you today to praise and worship you and give you thanks for all the things you continue to provide for ourselves and our families. Father, we humbly ask for forgiveness for all the times we have offended you. When we forget to acknowledge your presence in the image of our brothers and sisters, and for moments we fail to be good stewards of the blessings you have given us. Continue to guide and protect each one of us, Lord, that we may always walk in the light of your everlasting love and mercy. Grant us, Father, with your comfort in times of distress and with your strength in times of weakness. Bestow upon us your unending grace and healing that we may in turn become instruments of gentleness and compassion to others. We ask all this in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, with a prayer and the intercession of our Blessed Mother. Amen. Ang kisap ng watawat mo'y tagumpay na nagdiligdig 
Looking back two and a half years ago, we are looking forward and praying for this day. The day that we can all come out without fear or with less fear and to stand up to rebuild social engagement, families, community, and our economy. And from that two and a half years of fear and staying at home, the Philippine Women's University have strived to do their best to be of service to each and every one of us through sustaining free quality webinars and series that can be reached by all. And ladies and gentlemen, we did not stop there. As we continue to rebuild business and to the rest of our economy from the pandemic, we offer you again this webinar entitled Entrepreneurial Strategies and Tools for, for Sustainable Food Business Operation in the Now Normal. Mabuhay ladies and gentlemen, a pleasant and wonderful day to all the participants, guests, students, admin officials, and to the rest of you who are joining us today live via, via StreamYard. And of course, our hundreds of students, thousands of students who are actually watching us live in Facebook from all over the country. I am Abram Emmanuel Peralta, a proud PWU DHM student, and I will be your official moderator for this morning. But before we further start our event proper, let us all be reminded with, with the acronym PWU. P stands for P stands for prepare your notes and pens to write down new and updated industry information. W work with technology. Please feel free to use the chat box and reaction button on FB Live to converse well with our organizers and of course our speakers as we go throughout the entire event. And of course, you means to understand and use the knowledge and new learnings that the speaker will be sharing with us today to further improve our quest in resiliency and sustainable food business operations. Again, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us in this event. The Philippine Women's University Graduate School of Hospitality Management warmly welcomes you all in this webinar entitled Entrepreneurial Strategies and Tools for Sustainable Food Business Operations in the Now Normal. Without further ado, to give his opening message, may we call on the leader and lead innovator and the reason behind the strong foundation of the Philippine Women's University. Please help me welcome the President, Mr. Marco Alfredo M. Benitez. Dr. Felina Young, University Chancellor and SVPA, Dean Prima Bellana of the PW School of Hospitality Management, distinguished speakers, our hardworking faculty, dear students and guests watching our social media platforms, Good afternoon and welcome to this webinar organized by our Doctor of Hospitality Management students entitled Entrepreneurial Strategies and Tools for Sustainable Food Business Operations in the Now Normal. Congratulations to the organizers for staging this relevant and timely event. As the country continues to open up and we are in what we hope will be the endemic phase of COVID-19, businesses are making a gradual recovery as seen by the country's better than expected 8.3% first quarter GDP numbers, a stark contrast to the negative 3.9% GDP figures from the first quarter of last year. A closer look at the numbers shows an even more positive prospect, as the services sector was one of the key drivers of the growth, posting an 8.6% growth rate behind strong private consumption growth numbers of 10.1%, versus previous year's negative 4.8% for the same period. More and more Filipinos are enjoying family, leisure, travel, and tourism activities with a more relaxed quarantine restrictions and a high rate of vaccination among Filipinos, now standing at 77% of the target population. 
a quick trip to the nearest mall or a commute along EDSA will immediately show you that the number of people already out and about av availing of goods and services have pretty much returned to pre-pandemic levels. With all of this economic activity now being spurred by consumption of goods and services, as well as the revitalization of foreign investments into the country, now seems to be an ideal time for starting or reopening food businesses that may have closed or whose openings may have stalled as a result of the pandemic. Today's webinar hopes not only to identify the key challenges faced by the hospitality entrepreneurship industry during the pandemic, it also aims to share and explain best practices developed by those that have embarked and become successful during these trying times. Lastly, today's webinar hopes to give us a look into the trends and opportunities on the horizon for businesses and entrepreneurs that would like to embark on their own journey in this now normal post-pandemic environment. As we have said in the past, this once-in-a-lifetime pandemic has pushed all of us outside of our comfort zones, teaching us to be humble, resilient, creative, collaborative, and always open to learning from the experiences of others. As we enter the pandemic's new phase, one where, where we are transitioning to a sort of hybrid mode, as we learn to live with the virus while maximizing the innovations that have been developed in, the, in response to the crisis and without letting new infections disrupt our way of lives, this webinar is another timely learning experience for all of us, particularly those involved in the sector. Congratulations once again to the organizers, and I look forward to a very informative and meaningful discussion. Thank you and good afternoon. Thank you so much, President Benitez, for your support and for your leadership. Without further delay, to introduce the first speaker, may we call in our DHM classmate, Ms. Angeliza Aporado. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's my pleasure to introduce to you our first speaker for this afternoon. He graduated his Bachelor of Arts in Nursing at Central Scholar University in 1993. In addition, he finished his Master of Arts in Nursing at St. Paul University in 2009. And aside from that, he also earned his event management at West London University in 2013. And moreover, in 2015, he took his culinary arts at the Global Academy School. Currently, he is the owner of Mark and Co Events Business Partner. Please help me welcome Mr. Mark Santos. A pleasant morning to one and all. Before anything else, I am very grateful and humbled that I was invited to be one of your speakers. At first, I was hesitant to accept this opportunity because I wasn't sure what to share for a crowd um, like this with a higher stature when it comes to educational attainment. But on the second thought, maybe I said to myself, I have something to share after all that you can pick up from it, the so-called life's lessons when it comes to food business or any businesses you may have in mind. But I will not be teaching you the entrepreneurial strategies and tools for sustainable food business operations in the now normal per se, because I know you already know those. Before now, formulated and tested those tools and strategies by people like you. Instead, I will, I'm going to share the ways we did to survive the business despite of the pandemic. Before the pandemic, our average event was at least one event a week, one event a week, during off, um, off peak months, that's from April to August. And then during peak season from September to March, our average number of events is 10 events a month. The highest peak of which is during December, ranging from 15 to 20 events. When we say events, that will include um, the suppliers, 
such as the caterers, photographers, videographers, venue providers, light and sound provisioners, florists and stylists, makeup artists, event coordinators, cake suppliers, bridal car, and others. Just imagine the big group of people with, a pan with this pandemic, all of us from the live events were greatly affected during these difficult times. No events allowed during the enhanced community quarantine as mandated by interagency task force. Luckily, on the second year during the modified enhanced community quarantine, there were a few events made wherein intimate events started. For our food business, that's the Two Chefs Kitchen. Um, it was like a blessing, um, a blessing in disguise because our business bloomed due to online business became a trend. From, uh, from catering intimate events, we branched out to racing tables and even um, racing boxes to racing boxes for the companies. We offered cakes online, food trays online, and even packed meals in the offices. That's where we got our cash flow during the pandemic. In relation to this, the impact of COVID-19 on selling, online sales increased by 40% between May 26 and June 1 of 2020 when compared with the period between February 24 and March 1, 2020 according to Signified E. The sudden increase of e-commerce adoption, particularly for food, fast-moving consumer goods and pharmaceutical products is happening globally, says Craig Mayer, the president of Industrial Brokerage, JLL, who is based in Los Angeles. Period of crisis are difficult tiring and stressful for small businesses. Small businesses are the lifeblood of the economy, but unlike our larger counterparts, we may not have the resources for risk teams and contingency planning to be in the built-in. To be in the built-in to our daily operations. This can make us more prone to sufferings when one strikes. Although every business is unique and different, there are general solutions that can keep small businesses going, going during a crisis. Let me share ways to keep small business running. So here are the ways we did to protect our small business during the corona virus pandemic. One, we put health and safety first. As entrepreneur, we prioritize our health first, limited our travel, and maximize communication and collaboration tools through online and cell phones. As for, as for our employees, we keep them informed of travel restrictions took steps to minimize virus transmissions um, to our workplace. It was also wise to establish procedures for staff to report if they are feeling unwell, if they suspect exposure to the virus or any infection. Number two, we keep our customers happy. There are two there are two ways to keep our business profitable, increasing your cash flow and reducing your expenses. Let's talk about the first one. Keeping cash flow into your business is a priority during times of crisis. As consumer spending shifts, it is often harder to keep your sales number high. That's why it is important to keep your existing customers happy. 
the happier your customers are, the longer they will stay customers. Happy customers also bring other financial benefits during crisis. They are more likely to refer more customers to you. Make large orders. Promote your business on social media. Depending on the nature of your business and products, the methods you use for customer engagement and satisfaction may vary. Before making any significant decisions, conduct a qualitative research to find out who your most valuable customers are, what they want, and how you can give it to them. Most generally, you can keep customers happy by offering loyalty discounts for repeat, or, um, repeat customers, thanking customers for their support during a crisis, giving customers extra bonuses with orders like product samples, running giveaways, prioritizing fast and helpful customer service. The third one, we need to assess the impact on operations. What will happen to our business during this crisis? To help answer the question, we run best case and worst case scenarios and develop contingency plans for each. Include timeframes in our assessment that consider the impacts of the pandemic if it will stay here a little longer. Number four, we need to reach out. We develop a communication plan to reach out to our clients, partners and suppliers. That's through email, um, FB Messenger. One more thing we keep on posting of food to our FB page to let our clients know that we are still existing even in the time of pandemic. Number five, be ready to adapt um, from normal to new normal. The COVID-19 is changing our lives in ways and at scale we could never have imagined. We felt that there is a need to adopt and reconfigure our business for each stage of the crisis. If it's short-term problem, then cutting costs and other variable spending like marketing and travel may, may help us through. Look for ways to support your client needs or diversify your products and services during this time. Number six, we need to evaluate our finances. Any emergency or contingency plan should account for fin financial risk and impacts. We regularly update and track our cash flow, forecast, and look for opportunities to reduce the non-critical expenditure. Also, we review our accounts receivable and assess for any credit risks. Number seven, we have to cut down the unnecessary. As I mentioned about, um, as I mentioned earlier, reducing, um, reducing our expenses is another great way to keep our business profitable. The lower our expenses are, the less revenue we need to fund our business. When reducing your costs, experts recommend that you start by looking at your current and past um, budgets. Through examining your past budgets, you can identify areas of financial inefficiency that is unnecessary spending that did little to nothing to facilitate your profits. These expenses can be cut down on. But before cutting down expense, consider how it will impact your everyday business life and cut down accordingly. Number eight, we have to stay on top of the fast-changing compliance landscape, keeping an eye developments that may directly affect our business, just like the photo says. Don't quit, do it. Number nine, Number nine, um, be prepared for the last, for the light at the end of the tunnel. With our employees safe and healthy, 
and our operational and financial impacts mitigated as best we could and thought about how we'll successfully restore operations when the COVID-19 pandemic is over. And above all, bring your business online. If putting your business online was one of your long-term goals, now is the best time to em embrace the dream. Consumer behavior changes during this, this crisis periods, meaning that people often resort to shopping online. There are many benefits to building e-commerce for our business. First, selling online requires very little investment, making it affordable for many small businesses. Second, your e-commerce arm can supplement your regular business, giving your existing cash flow a nice boost. And finally, online business reach larger groups of customers meaning you won't be limited to customers in your geographic area. Social media marketing, that's Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, lead the pack as the most common social media platforms used by the marketers. In conclusion, none of us knows what's coming next or if we will face pandemic like this again in our lifetimes but it pays to have a plan to bring your business through emergencies like COVID-19. And I'm sure it is in a strong position for recovery once it has passed. While small business owners cannot control a crisis at the macroeconomic scale, there are many small changes you can make to keep your business in the green until the crisis is over. Period of crisis feel like they continue forever, but this is seldom true. Eventually, the crisis will end, meaning the best way to survive a crisis is to keep your business going one day at a time. Thank you. Santos, the owner of Mark & Co Events and the business partner of Two Chefs Kitchen. Those are truly excellent additions, Sir Mark, in our preparation as we re-envision the new culture and standard of food business in the new normal. And Sir, I do understand why people are really tremendously affected by the pandemic. I understand in your talk that I have actually acknowledged that there are no frameworks in order for us to rebound Diba? and to stand up again if there are any pandemics with your structure with your with your advices no with the ways to protect our small business this can be our future framework if ever that the pandemic or I, another pandemic will hit us when you said the 10 uh the 10 elements or the 10 ways to protect our small business number one focus on health and safety right number two keep customers satisfied no uh, above everything else, no, your customer is actually your backbone of the company. Assess the impact on operations. Reach out to your students. Reach out to your customers. Reach out to the employees. Be ready to adapt. Evaluate your finances. No, uh, Cut down the unnecessary. Stay on fast-changing landscape. Be prepared for the light at the end of the tunnel. That, that really uh, hit me really hard no? because... Uh, we keep on saying na baka mamaya hindi na, hindi na bumalik, right? And some of us are actually cutting, uh, cutting so much in our company that we fail to understand that the pandemic is not forever. No, that's a really, really good advice. And of course, bring your business online. And that is the most important aspect that we have learned in this pandemic. Sir Mark, maraming maraming salamat in that in that particulars, in those additions, in our knowledge. And we truly, we truly enjoyed your short but very, very insightful talk. Maraming maraming salamat, Sir Mark. And now, sabi nga po nila ay papunta daw po tayo sa exciting part, Sir Mark. Sir Mark, we have a brief Q&A segment. Is it, is it okay? Yes, sir. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Sir Mark. 
Sir, the committee have prepared several questions for us to be more guided in our journey in business sustainability. Now, the first question actually goes as, um, this is the first question. What are the best strategies to keep your business going amidst the pandemic? And why, what do you think those strategies are effective, were effective, sir? Okay. Um, the best strategy, I think, from, from the 10 ways I've mentioned yeah. is bringing your business online. That's the last one I've mentioned because mm -hmm. that's the new trend and everyone is using the... The, the internet. So that's the best way to, to reach your, your clients. Bring your product online. That I, that that's I understand. the most effective one, I think. Yes, sir. And especially, no, uh, ang lakas nga ng loob ng, ng mga uh, online sellers natin, even though they don't have really businesses, they shifted into baking online even though they are not bakers. No, lakas lang talaga ng loob. Eh. What more is our, is our uh, what more uh, yung mga businesses that talagang they are structured already, like two chefs, right? Could you tell us yes. something more about your products, sir, in two chefs? Yes, sir. Um, the well, the two chefs catering started as catering per se with mm -hmm. with my business partner. Um, if you know Chef Park in Pante, he's my business partner. That's okay. why I was invited to this. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, he's my business partner from from catering business like i mentioned a while ago it um the business we branch out because we cannot we cannot do events anymore that's yeah. why we branch out we cater to intimate events um mm -hmm. events that's the 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 part i mean the there are 20 to 30 plus intimate events we cater on those and then we we offer also greasing table during the intimate events, even mm -hmm. the greasing boxes for for the for the companies. Um, we are we are giving uh, what this. There are different companies like Abbott, San Pharma, to mention a few. They are getting our they are availing what is the greasing table, uh, the mm -hmm. greasing boxes, I should say. Mm -hmm were in yun yung mga binibigay naman nila sa mga doctors nila that's one and the third one um the second one we do the 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 cake online because mm -hmm. we cannot sell a new from from our display area so we made it online that was the pipik siya during during like mother's day father's day there's a bulk of orders during those um during those events Mm -hmm. And then we also offer food trays online. Mm -hmm. Na sabi, I, like I mentioned a while ago, we did not limit our geographic area in just like in one location. We mm -hmm. could reach far as Paranaque, up south, and then down north. Marami hanggang Bulacan, they offer pag mm -hmm. online ka. And then also we offered um, food, the, the bento meals, something yeah. like that, online yeah. as well. They knew um, two chefs through online, I should say. Mas nakilala ang two chefs through online. 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 Yes. Thank you, sir. And I truly agree on that. What I get from your talk, sir, and your, your answer is innovation and, you know, being a trendsetter and trend follower will really, really boost up your uh your cash flow actually in your in your company kasi nga wala nga po pasok eh bawal nga ano so talagang yes, innovation sir. no we need to think of ways on how to thrive diba sabi nyo nga i i like how you end it you need to focus on your business one day at a time right do not do not let go of your business thank you thank you sir mark we have another question our technical can you please flash our second question Okay. So, sir, the question goes like this. As government restrictions change daily during the pandemic, is it crucial to know what will happen if your number of attendees change or an event is no longer deemed safe? Sir. If, um, if you need to reschedule or cancel, what those terms look like or how, uh, how flexible is your cancellation policies? Pagdating naman, sir, doon sa, sa mga event na yun, 
like before, di ba? Especially yung second year na, biglang urong sulong IATF, right? Biglang, okay, we are okay with 50 in this particular uh, space. And then after, biglang umangat ulit, naging, naging second uh, level 2, naging level 3. How do you deal with that, sir? In, in What's your strategy? Well, of course, um, before booking an event, uh -huh. they have to to do some reserve to to give a reservation key and that's um what you call this that's um hindi na pwedeng ipalek mm -hmm. yun, the, the reservation fee so there's a bond between the client and us so urong sulong man yung client later on matutuloy at matutuloy ito um would you believe that during this pandemic the, the plate per head is more expensive than before. Really? Before the pandemic, if we offer as low as 700 per head mm -hmm. um, before the pandemic, but now during this intimate event, um, we offer, well, not bragging, but, you know, I just have to be honest. Um, we offer that the rate per head now is as high as 3,000 per head or more. Why? Wow. Because, yes, sir. Because <laughs> there are like, andaming, we need, andaming gagas to send. We do the swap mm -hmm. testing for all, um, mm -hmm. for all employees, the waiters, the wait staff, I mean, the bartenders, lahat ng nasa venue, we have to swap test them. And then everything is sanitized. So mas malaki ang gastos. Then instead of like yung water lang dati, isang galun lang bit bit mo, now it's like one bottle, you have to to give them yung bottled water na hindi na yung ano so nag nag-iipa na and yes. then maraming bagay maraming bagay lahat covered um na ano na ginagawa kaya mas mataas na ngayon na, and i believe um the other caterers would agree to me na mas mataas ngayon during this um pandemic um well mas mas konte um, there's there's a few were attendees to an event, but so matutal mas malaki pa rin ang kita, I guess, kasi mas mahal yung sige. <laughs> I hope na ko yung ano yung question. Yes, Sorry, yes you ko, did. Kasi naka flash all throughout, so hindi ko ma ano. No, I but, but, but hear what I am saying. Yeah, yeah, you did actually, really. But a uh, follow up question, sir. If you need to reschedule or cancel, what those terms look like? Uh, what are your terms if they need to cancel? Di ba nakapag-down na? Uh, how flexible is your cancellation policy, sir? Well, sometimes um, if they cancel the events, we will give the reser we will give the reservation back, the, the reservation okay. fee back to the client. Okay. Really That's 100%, one. sir? That's being makatao, you know? Uh -huh. Dapat makatao ka, gumastos na nga, tapos hihingan mo pa ng pera, tapos hindi mo ibabalik. Um, yun. Pero... It's, it is stated in our contract that once you pay the reservation, mm -hmm. um, sandali, nawala ako. Uh, sir, okay lang po, sir. Well, we can we can hear you po. Yeah. Ah, okay. No, nag yung, sorry, sorry. Uh, no so, worries. Once na, ano, we give back the reserve again, we give back the reservation fee para naman maging makatao. But then mm -hmm. it is stated in our contract that once you give your reservation fee, um, once you cancel the event, uh, your event is for people. Ayun. Uh, so, okay. Well, makatao naman kami ni Chef Park Infante. So once canceled, eto po yung ibinigay mong pera. Pag habang hindi pa was it, as long as it's still far from the date of the event. Alam, actually, these are really insightful, uh, insightful details, sir, because we have a lot of caterers already now listening to us, right? And we don't have a standard actually in the industry as of this moment. So talaga, we are learning from your practice. And considering that Mark and Co actually strived in the pandemic, di ba? Kahit matataas yung, yung ating uh, plate per head or yung plate per packs natin, still, we have a market for it because quality and safety is actually what you are you what what you're offering the customers so that's that's actually 100% relatable na siguro no so for the caterers out there listening to us and small business owners listening to us no um 
Do not be afraid to mark up your expenses. Kailangan talaga kasi kung hindi, magsasara ka. Am I right, sir? Yes, sir. I hope yung ibang caterers, wag magtaasan. You know, they won't raise their brows. Mm-hmm. That's the sinasabi ko. But then that's the truth. Um, kung mas balitang kita, well, hindi ka kikita. Uh, there's a little uh, alignment and cash flow coming into your business. And with all the efforts that we are doing, di ba, in the catering service industry right now and how we manage it, no? Uh, lahat naman siguro ay ideal. Lahat naman ang ginagawa natin, no? Okay. Uh, there is another question from our, from from the team. Uh, could we flash it? Okay, so, what are your thoughts, sir, on cloud kitchen and virtual restaurant? How do we know if they are legit and pay the required taxes? No? Sa... sa Sa ngayon, di ba? Uh, ang, when, when the pandemic started, sir, naramdaman ko din yan with our business. No? Sobrang daming mas mababang nag-offer kesa sa atin. Right? Sobrang daming mas mababang nag-offer kesa sa atin at mas tinatangkilik yun. No? Uh, what, are your, what are your thoughts about that, sir? Wait, I am writing it down. The, the <laughs> um, for, for, for the cloud kitchen, um, well, nauso yun. Um, because of the pandemic. The question there is, are they legit? That we do not know, we have to be honest. Are they really existing? I don't know if they are really existing because in online, there's a big, um, what's this? There's a big, sometimes kasi there's scammers. So, uh-huh. hindi natin malaman if, there's, if they are legit or not. Mm-hmm. So, well, before getting the was before before ordering or before paying i should say you have to receive first the product bago ka magbayad something like that are yeah. they uh, are they paying their taxes i don't know as well um for us we are registered we are legit we are yes. paying our taxes but for some others i do not know i cannot speak for themselves pero for one thing for sure um, some of they are not paying their taxes. Yes, sir. Sir, Calling, let's start. Um, sir, baka, ano, baka itong talk na to marinig ng mga taga BIR. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> the- <laughs> No, actually, talagang ano naman, eh, no? Kailangan legal tayo lagi when we're having our business. Sir, uh, how does that impact your your business? Of course, we go online. All legit business goes online also. Pero ang kalaban natin doon is yung mga hindi legit. Ibig sabihin, they don't pay anything. They don't have any they don't have any uh, investments, right? So, mas mga baba sila. And some of them doesn't really know 100% on how to, you know, properly mark up and all. So, mas mga baba yung prices nila. How did you, your company survive against this this uh, competition na mas mga baba yung prices nila because they are not legit, no? Well, um, I believe that is saying that if you offer a quality food, mm-hmm. then you have the right to what is to ask for your own price, something exactly. like that. Yeah. Yun lang panglaban namin. Masarap pagkain namin. Eto yung eto yung price namin. It's just like exactly. take it or leave it principle. Exactly. Something like that. So ano naman? Awa ng jos. Madami naman umu order. Masarap daw yung pagkain. Well, maybe because of Chef Mark. <laughs> Ayun, so ganun. Ganun lang naman yun, sir. And to, to everyone, as long as you are confident enough with yes. your product, yes. you have, I mean, you are also confident to dictate your price. Hayaan mo, na yung, mga, ano, hayaan mo na yung mga hindi legit na ano, online sellers. Bahala that, I agree. that I agree. And what I observed also, sir, no, during that time is that um, Yes, no mga first na dumami yung mga nagbebenta, yung mga hindi legit masyado, yung mga mababa ang price, they have not sustained their business. Mataas man ako, but I have sustained my business. I sustained my people, I sustained my employee, etc. ba? And everything is well well planned. ba? So we are exactly not... Sorry for that. No, because, it's okay. because you need um, a cash flow coming in. Exactly. Kailangan mo kumita to survive. Exactly. Exactly. Paano ka mag-survive if 
pababaan mo yung pressure mo na konti na lang yung kita. Well, sometimes I follow the Chinese principle in business. Pag pa konti ko, liit kita, ay liit ang kita, dadami din later on. That's the Chinese principle eh. But now, for now, I, um, I don't believe in that. I mean, baka iba na ngayon. Dapat, kung ano yung product mo, yun ang sisingilin mo. I agree, Sir Mark. I agree. At kaya nga, uh, our topic for today is all about sustainability. You should be able to sustain your business, right? Your business yeah. operation. And sir, actually, we have one last question uh, for he, you know? Uh, the last question goes like this. How do you handle financial concerns, especially with the operations and employees' concerns when there are limited booking during the time of the pandemic? This is according uh, with accordance to the Mark and Co. Naman, no? Uh, alam na natin yung, yung extensions na ginawa natin sa Two Chefs Kitchen. Eh. But in Mark and Co., um, how do you how do you dealt with that, sir? The financial concerns. Kasi yung one event per week or ten events per month na sinabi nyo kanina, no? biglang bumaksak lahat ng yun. Do we maintain employees? Anong ginawa natin sa mga employees natin, sir? Okay. Um, that's true, no? Um, during the pandemic, of course, wala nang kita. So how I how I handle the, the the financial needs of my employees. As an employer, you still need to to give financial support to them. That's the role of being an owner of a company. Kahit wala nang kita, ibigay mo ang tulong to them, to your employees, because sila yung nagaakyat ng pera sa company mo. Papikit, ipikit mo ang mata mo, give your support, ayuda man, maybe for them, something like that. Basta you have to support them because later on, sila ulit ang mag ng pera sa kumpanya mo. And that's what I did. Sir, uh, follow-up question regarding that. Um, hindi ka nahirapan ibalik yung employees natin because that is actually the main problem right now of the companies no nung nag layoff tayo ng maraming ng mga employees especially yung mga kailangan nating employees talaga in order to run our business nahirapan ngayon tayo pabalikin sila because yung iba meron na and they are more comfortable staying at home because of online businesses or online platforms ng mga businesses um is it okay lang ba yung company niyo sir wala tayong ganung problem um well thank god I believe in a saying that God will provide. I'll always keep on that. God will provide. I, I don't know. Pero, um, I have only like 10 regular employees in Mark and Co. So, konti okay. lang naman yung binibigyan ng support. And I have like 30 on-call employees, something like oh. that. So, a total of like 40, 40 stuff during, um, during the setup, for every setup. So for for that um for the 10 regular you have to like give them a regular financial support. Hindi man katapat ng kinikita nila, but I have to give a financial support and even to the on-call ones. Pag um pag nag-message sila through through Messenger, you you give kahit, even if they won't ask a support. You ask them what sh- what do you need? How can I help? Something like that. Because like what I've said, later on, they will be the one at the end of the tunnel, pag may ilaw na ulit, sila ulit yung mag ng pera papunta sa company. Mm-mm. That I really get you, sir. Yung sinabi nyo kaninang, be prepared. No, You need to be prepared for the light at the end of the tunnel because hindi siya forever na wala. No, you need to survive. And it's a decision. It's a decision if you would like to continue and to survive your 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 company no like other hotels talaga sinabi nila no this is the time that we will close right pero for us especially business owner i think small business owners i think it's more manageable no because mas konti yung employees natin okay uh sir uh do you want to promote your business uh hearing uh, each and every one of us uh we have uh, hundreds of students and hundreds of participants here in Zoom Live, no? Watching your watching our live telecast right now, sir. Please promote your business. All right. Um. Thank Thank you very much for this opportunity, and I am inviting everyone watching this webinar to please like and um to please like 
to visit and like our page. One that is the Mark and Co events for your event planning, event coordination, and event styling needs. Um, paki like lang po, and we do really appreciate it. And then the second one, please visit and like our page as well, the Two Shelves Kitchen for your catering services needs. Yun lang po. Maraming maraming salamat. And thank you, Sir Abram, for this opportunity to, to, to everyone behind, behind this um, webinar. Maraming maraming salamat po for making me a part of this. Thank you very much po. Thank you, thank you, Sir Mark. Maraming maraming salamat po ulit. Actually, being uh, being added now in our chat box in the Zoom link is the uh, link of Mark and Co. and also the Two Chefs Kitchen. So please like and subscribe with the following links that's actually being provided now live in the chat box. Again, thank you so much, Mr. Mark Santos, the owner of Mark and Co. Events and business partner of Two Chefs Kitchen. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I know we want more time with Sir Mark, but that's all the time that we have for him. And again, thank you, Sir Mark. We would like now to award our certificate of recognition and appreciation for your efforts for today's event. May we flash our rec certificate of recognition? Thank you. Now, the Philippine Women's University School of Hospitality Management award the certificate of recognition to Miss. Sir Mark Santos as our guest speaker for importing his valuable insights and expertise during the virtual webinar entitled Entrepreneurial Strategies and Tools for Sustainable Food Business Operation in the New Normal, given this June, day of June 17, 2022, from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. via Facebook Live and YouTube Live at the Philippine Women's University Taft Avenue, Malate, Manila, signed with, by our professor, Dr. Jocelyn Sardenia, and of course, the Dean of School of Hospitality and Management, Dr. Epremuel Jose L. Abeliana. Again, sir, buong puso po namin pasasalamat, Mr. Mark Santos, the owner of Mark & Co., and of course, a business partner of Two Chefs Kitchen. Again, maraming maraming salamat po, and we are always at your service. Thank you, sir. Okay, that is Sir Mark. We have so much learnings. Isa pa lang po yan, no? We have so much learning for this morning. And now, not to further delay this particular event, may we now introduce again and call on again Miss Angelisa Aparado to introduce our second speaker. Our second speaker is a magna cum laude from the Polytechnic University of Philippines with a degree of Bachelor of Science in Hotel and Restaurant Management. In year 2010, she worked as a management trainee at the Jollibee Food Corporation. For six years, she worked at Shangri-La Hotel from the front office department in year 2012 up to year 2018. Now, she is the Managing Director of the SB Connection INC. Please help me welcome our second speaker, Ms. Marilyn Sebastian. Hi everyone, I'm Marilyn Sebastian. I'm the Managing Director of SAB Group or SAB Connection Inc. We are a food and beverage uh, company and Subgroup is a dynamic group that continuously work towards a unique brand of food and beverage through creation, development, and discovery. Before I, before I joined or before we founded the Subgroup uh, or Subconnection, I am a hotelier. I work as a service manager in at the Shangri-La Hotel um, for six years. And then during 2018, we 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 founded the sub connection so under 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 sub group we have the beer factory uh it originates from malaysia and we have chiem guy bastino designer pong connect philippines and wishbone brand so far that's the brands that we handled Uh, found, uh, founders of the sub group is the company. The company was founded by two sisters. It's me and my sister, together with the help of other food and beverage entrepreneurs. Okay, so 
I graduated as hotel and restaurant. I graduated BS Hotel and Restaurant Management, and my sister has a gaming uh, industry experience for ten years. So this is a milestone that we have. We are a startup company. So 2018, Sab Group discovers its first outlet, which is the Beer Factory Greenfield. Sab Group created and opened Bastinus Diners. And 2019, Sab Group develops Chiam Guy. It's our own brand, uh, Vietnamese restaurant. Sab Group discovers the Pong Connect and share it to different bars in Manila. Then comes 2020, we recreated and opened a coffee bucket it's a it's a cafe and bar in Quezon. then uh, we also gave birth to Sebmart, which is the online online um grocery because that's that's what you can do during the pandemic time so the beer factory we have two outlets which is in greenfield and eton centries em guy uh we have one in eton centries also and Basinus Diners, that's the Filipino um, uh, team uh, kiosk. Okay, we have two so far. Then the coffee bucket. Then the Pong Connect Philippines. So Pong Connect Philippines is the first digital beer pong in the Philippines or in the whole world because uh, it revo revolutionized the, the, the beer pong industry. Um, it, the founder of this is from Hong Kong. Uh, we have a Hong Kong partners for this one. Yearly, we do an international competition for the beer pong. But currently, these are the bars that has a beer pong right now. Okay, in partnership with Rumbus Connection, Pong Connect, Meat Flavors, FNB Consultant, FNB Connects, Malaysia. So mostly Malaysian partners, yeah. So our vision is to continuously create, develop, and discover unique food and beverage brands. Create, it's mostly our own brand. Develop, um, it's more on if we partner or a joint venture with other uh, entrepreneurs or visionaries and discover if well, we bring home different brands from different countries. Well, that is unique uh, brands. Um, actually, uh, Everything happens because of uh, of the connection to other entrepreneurs. As you can see, the name of the company is uh, Sub Connection. So it, uh, the, the company uh, was born because of the connection from different entrepreneurs and food and beverage visionaries. Yeah. Our mission is connecting uh, people through food. And Subconnection is in partnership with Rumbus Connection. So just a brief background. Um, I am working as a service manager 2017. During that time, um, I was thinking my sister just wanted to open a restaurant. Uh, it's it's in, not in my plan or imagination to quit my career and become a entrepreneur. However, during our visit in Rumbus Connection, uh, in their office, in their office in Malaysia, uh, we went to different brands that they have, and most of their most of their restaurants, forty to fifty percent of their employees are Filipinos. So imagine the warm welcome. Imagine how they greeted us. Imagine how they say oh, we wanted to see you in the Philippines. We wanted to go home and work in the brand, in the same brand, but it was in their home country already. So these are the brands under Rumbus Connection, okay? But before that, the reason why I, I transfer from being a hotelier, uh, uh, can I go back in Rumbus Connection? Um, the reason, one of the reasons that encouraged me to become an entrepreneur is I believe in their vision of delivering happiness through food and beverage. Their, their vision to, to find purpose and passion in delivering that happiness through food and beverage. Seeing Filipinos going home and working at the same time in the same brand that they, they were, were working on actually the happiness of, of having that 
gives you the purpose to really be an entrepreneur. And and with that, um, let me share with you other competitive brands that they have and that we could that we are planning to bring in the Philippines in the next few years. Okay, um, they have the Rama V and the Dancing Fish. Most of their brands are award-winning brands. They have a lot of, uh, of, of features and awards accomplished for the past few years. Ramavi is a fine Thai cuisine since 1995. Ramavi opened two decades ago at first Thai fine dining restaurant in Kuala Lumpur. Hidden away from KL's hassle and bustle, the award-winning restaurant is known for welcoming diners in an opulent and cozy ambience combined with an air of tranquility and commendable hospitality. Next is the Thai Husay. Thai Chinese Porklicious Comfort Food. Uh, most of the brands right now are located in Kuala Lumpur or in Malaysia. Uh, for avid visitors, Bangkok in Thailand, many will notice how Thai cuisine. Uh, so it's totally different. Most of the th most of the restaurants in the Philippines mostly are Thai, full Thai restaurants. But this one, they combine the Thai and the Chinese food. And it can be found effortlessly in every nook and cranny of the city. An original concept by Rumbus Connection Group. Next one will be Dancing Fish. This one is Malay Indo cuisine in contemporary chic dining setting. As you can see, a lot of their original brands are Asian food <laughs> that you cannot find easily, especially here in the Philippines, that we are more um, craving for Western food. Next will be the Beer Factory. So this is the first brand that we brought in the Philippines beer factory. So currently we have two outlets right now, but we're preparing to open a few more this year and the next coming year. We also have Susie Wong and Rabbit Hole. Beer factory is an award winning as you can see the awards that they got. It's an industrial factory theme bar. The, the beer factory is one of the most talk about drinking place in Malaysia, spearheading the scene with its industrial factory theme bar and conceptualized design across individual outlets. Then the next one is um, Suzy Wong, an exclusive business club in the heart of the city. So this is a different type of, um, um, of a bar. It's a whole new dimension to business networking. Then they also got the the rabbit hole, a dine, drink, and dance establishment inspired by Alice in the Wonderland. However, for this brand, during pandemic time, it was changed to a resort filled cafe theme bar, a theme theme restaurant. So that that kind of concept will bring in the Philippines, since mostly uh, Filipinos like different types of cafes right now so because during pandemic it changed a lot of things in the fnb industry they all we the um under rumbus connection we also have uh bushido the japanese tapas bar then the attic it's really a graffiti art team sports and game club So this is one concept that we are trying also the beer stop, but uh, it we don't have the outlet so far, but it's incoming. <laughs> so let's go back to so that's all about Rumbus Connection, yeah, and the part uh, our partnership with Rumbus Connection. So you have seen the the sub connection and Rumbus Connection. So so the transition was there uh, a hotelier for six years, turned entrepreneur, collaborating with different companies all over the world. We have a Rumbus Connection, which is our Malaysian partner, the Digital Beer Po, mostly uh, they, we are partnering with Singaporeans and from Hong Kong, yeah. Um, that's how we started. That's how we, that's how 
we that's the leap of faith from an from someone that doesn't know anything about business and had a leap of faith in opening a company and partnering with them the knowledge that i gained uh, during the past few years, is, uh, they, are, they came from those partners and mentors us to share their strategies on how we could, we could be successful, uh, we could be a successful entrepreneur. Okay, during this, this journey, during this journey, the challenges that you may face, in, in, especially in, in, in opening a company, the first one, will be the growing responsibility of the business in different area through your through your people through your through business the profit and loss through the marketing strategy of of those things but one thing that i that i will gonna i will gonna advise with all of you this growing responsibility of business the company or you um you in terms of people okay in terms of people i believe that empowering your people is very important in order for business to grow okay so that's one key key things that i've learned for the last few years you cannot do it alone business is a team sport always remember that it is not about one person success is best when it was shared okay next that i i really struggle with is the con not yeah i really struggle with is the competition in the philippines filipinos were great in innovation so in having a business or in in having a company there should always be a continuous innovation in business so every time there's a lot of innovation that filipinos come up with so the competition was so high and you alone of having a company and being an entrepreneur should have that continuous innovation in business. Okay. Yes. So able to do innovation in because this is what uh, I can share with you. Innovation is really important because for all your brands to be top of the mind of your customers it's very important that you will launch new things once in a while yeah so for us it's more on quarterly we launch new things or we re re revise things that we've done and what how can we grow it better yeah. what Okay, next is embracing digital revolution. This one we cannot, we cannot, we need to go with the flow. Okay, the digital revolution during the pandemic time, the Philippine economy went to different things. It's the, uh, many people saying it's really a digital revolution for us. So, and um. So during this time, actually, when we, the good thing is about us being young and being digitally involved in different things. When we started the company, for example, uh, the standard or the, the POS that is really, um, that, that is mostly used by other restaurants, we made it cloud-based. So during the pandemic time, we were able to, to, to change immediately because all our restaurants are cloud-based system and we were able to go online immediately yeah okay one moment okay sorry for that okay um so those are the important challenges that you need to take note so you need to know you, you need to you need to find focus during the growing uh, during the time when your company or when your business is growing okay next one is that you always have that innovation you need to know what inspires you to get that 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 that, that, that key 
to innovation in your business. You need an inspiration. You need to see a lot of things in order to come up a new innovation. And then the other one is that you need to always be connected with what is new in the market. It's the digital revolution. Okay, next. Okay, next is um, during opening a business or during during the time that you are starting, there are some, if you are the head of the company, if you are head of the company, you are the strength of the company, you are co the core of the company, um, what you vision or what you visualize your company will be the the roadmap to to its um look to its location so there, these are the things that i could share with with all of you who wanted to become an entrepreneur okay first is that commit to transparency be real and you have nothing to fear most of the time people cannot open a business people are afraid to become an entrepreneur because of fear be, before anything else go for it <laughs> don't i know it's right to think what are the things that you need to do not to fail not to not to hinder you to opening something but don't uh, do, do not fear in in starting it okay your culture is your brand what you believe in for your company will be your brand i believe i started the company more than the profit of course as a business uh, woman i am into profitability of a company but more than that the first inspiration that got me is the people in becoming an entrepreneur it's more on the people and passion and purpose for this thing okay so that until now uh, after three to four years i always go with the list of what can i do to improve our employees to improve the 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 culture of our company don't try to be someone that you are not okay don't try to be someone that you are not um i want to be like starbucks i want to be like this company but you are not they have their own story and you have your own story next yeah. so next one i wanted to share is alignment it doesn't matter what your sometimes people were like need to put uh, our core values our core values it doesn't matter what your core values are as long as you commit to them i could for for uh, for me it's more on delivering happiness through food and beverage i always ask a lot of people like do we do you find that happiness or do you smile when you eat do you like the food as simple as those so as long as you commit to what you started, that's the uh, one of the important thing about that. Next, next that I will gonna share with you is emotional motion. What's that? <laughs> Actually, if you are the head of the company, you are the source of strength. So, so many things happen actually especially during pandemic time many many lost their businesses many closed down many are struggling many are trying to survive so as a, the head of the company if you are the first one to break down business is not really for you <laughs> so business is also a test of your emotional quotient up uh, your mental health is important because because through time as uh, the the moment that you are growing many were tra were relying on you and the more that you are growing the 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 things that you handle sometimes it's out of hand 
and when things out get out of hand, may I know how you react on it? Yeah. So you need to to have a higher emotional quotient in order to run a business, in order to become an entrepreneur. Yeah. So those are some advices. Okay. So meron pa pala. So one more is overcoming. This is important. You must know how to overcome different area of obstacles. You need to be an open-minded person and a solution giver because that's the only time you may, you will be able to overcome different circumstances in your company. Remember, you are the head. You are the final word on what you are going to do. If this restaurant fails, you are the final word if you are going to decide if this restaurant will gonna close or what are the other options that we could do about this restaurant. So in small things, um, for me, I always celebrate those small wins that I got as the head of the company. I owe, we need to overcome different situations, different situations that, that arises during pandemic. All the restaurants right now that is open, I can really say they all their heads or all those people are overcome. They overcome, they survive the pandemic. Yeah. So those are those are the things. Those are the things that I wanna share with you. The challenges, I mean, I there's a lot more challenges, but I want to emphasize those things. The things, the values, the things that you should have in order to become an entrepreneur. Yeah. Those small, small things are important when starting a business. And also, um, I will gonna be biased. Most of my presentation are into food and beverage because my company is into food and beverage. That's the thing that I could share with all of you. And um, with that, with the flow of my presentation, um, how we started, what challenges that I could share with you, the inspiration uh, in in doing the business, and um, let me share that uh, for those people or the students who wanted to become entrepreneur in the next few years, okay? I'll give you some uh, some information that the grab, maybe some of you see this presentation. If not, mostly they sent it to, to um, restaurant owners like us. So this is a very tedious report on the innovation of food and beverage. If you wanna start a restaurant, this will be a good reference. So let me share with you innovation for consumer needs. What are the trends in food and beverage right now? What is in, what is out, something like that. So let me share a taste of what's to come in food and beverage. If you're reading this, you're probably someone who works in F&B industry. So are intending to open an F&B establishment. So it's very important. It's a good it's a good presentation, meaning you know how our relationship with food has changed. Exactly. During pandemic, it changed totally. People are staying in and more, staying in more and eating out less. And they're all just hungry as good food. This has led to food delivery becoming a bigger part of daily life than ever before. Okay, so that's the intro of Grab. Okay, next. Okay, so a taste of Southeast Asia. Most popular local dishes ordered by a grab food in Southeast Asia. As you can see, in Philippines, pork chop with rice. Yeah, so Filipinos like pork chop with rice. Um, this one. So uh, in Vietnam, you have rice with pork ribs. And then in Thailand, you have Som tam with crab. In Malaysia, their popular food, which is nasi lemak. Then you have in Singapore, the prata. And Indonesia, stir fried spicy noodles. Okay, really, um, it's, it's really nice presentation. Okay, while, uh, fun fact, oh, let's read this one. 
while Filipinos love pork chop with rice, especially in Manila, Cebu and Pampanga, chicken barbecue with rice is more popular in Davao. Do you agree, guys? <laughs> so, as you can see, the statistics is food delivery expenditure in the Philippines alone contributed an estimate of 1.1 billion. Filipinos love to eat. Food options are abundant. Next. COVID-19 changes where and how we ate. Okay. On January 30, 2020, the Philippines saw its first coronavirus case, the start of chain of events that led to unprecedented Unprecedented restrictions and closure. With the restrictions measured in place, more people turn to turn to food delivery as a way of sorting out their meals. So, um, actually, they asked me to share what are the things that changes or what is the new normal. So, with this presentation of Grab, it answered that question. So, this is a presentation for 2020 and 2021. Okay, next. So food delivery, technically that increased during the pandemic time. 34% of meals consumed in the Philippines are via dining out, delivery or takeaway, of which almost 3 in 10 are via food delivery. Okay, next. So mostly that's their statistics. Then. Okay, more F&B business decided to... Okay, next muna muna. Mostly that's their statistic on how competitive or how competitive is uh, grab delivery. Okay, so the many delicious opportunities of food delivery. Next. Okay, so this one. What do, we, do people want for food delivery? Here's how can you make offerings for appealing to them. Yes, the grab says it's more on what Filipino wants for their food delivery. However, um, I believe that uh, their statistics also shows what they want even in dining okay understanding the food delivery scene uh, the understanding the Philippine food delivery scene okay so married with kids 52 percent which is true family dining out four to five people average household size 25 to 44 years old 65 percent. Uh, as you can see, if you go around weekends, many were uh, families dining out. Okay, next. So that's a detailed statistics. If you wanna, if you wanna um, discuss or if you wanna study it, I can share it with you. Okay, this one: the most orders. So in the be the behavior of Filipinos, what do they order most of? most of the time so when do they order it's the same when you want to go out and eat food okay so did you know that most orders are made by single consumer on grab food for that in that grab food although in dining it's mostly groups okay and ha they have a bigger portion for lunch apart from fast food filipinos are also filipinos also enjoyed baked treats like cakes and donuts do you agree with that fast food pizza cake bakery chinese actually chinese uh, cuisine are getting a high uh, exposure or high emphasis right now donuts milk tea burgers coffee chicken as you can see uh, we love western food <laughs> yeah so burgers fast food and the pastries we love mary grace uh, what are other brands that we love right most of the pastries that's why during the pandemic there's a lot of um, incoming bakers so many bakers online shop right okay next is next page yeah. yeah okay so the first thing that changed right now is that is that we are turning into a healthy eating yeah, so right now, actually, even in our restaurants, people were becoming um, um, very conscious with what they eat. So that's the first thing. Okay, next. I think Nandu's next one. Yeah, next page.
Okay, so want to get more people try to try your food? Okay, there you go. So what are some favorite meals that consumers are not able to cook at home? So in actually finding what is the concept of your restaurant, you need to know this statistics. You, for example, with this, 70% hindi ng mga Filipino, they cannot cook pizza. Do you agree? They cannot bake. And so many things to do when you are cooking pasta. So that's the highest, uh, that's, that's the statistics. So next one. Okay, so this a winning recipe for food delivery. So these are the parang, inspiration or guidelines. If you want to open a restaurant or if you want to start in food and beverage, this is what they, um, they recommended. So first is that what to eat. Well, if you're opening a restaurant, what to eat? Yeah, so how you will gonna, how will you gonna market so this is their recommendation. These are the trends right now. So life biggest dilemma, what to eat. Getting a consumer to pick your restaurant over dozens of other options can be tricky. So let's take a look of what consumers cares about. How do they decide what to eat? So this is a good reference already. So what uh, drives Filipinos to try new restaurants first is the variety of choice, 71%. Always check the variety of choice. Value for money, 54%. Promotions, 48%. Visual appeal of menu or food images. That's the reason digital marketing are up right now. Because we need that. Restaurants need that to drive the, the restaurant. In 2020, the average Filipino consumer on Grab Food tried approximately two to three different restaurants in a month. Seven ways to get people to order and reorder. So the first thing, pricing it right. So in opening a restaurant or in food and beverage, you need to know the what is the right price. Having more lower price items can lead consumer to buy more in a single order. Or having it a rise, uh, I mean a higher price actually will lead to as long as you have a good food, even it's a higher price, they will gonna get it. Yeah. Try to list your items for each category in a sending price order. Yeah. Actually, there's also a strategy in in costing your 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 menu. Second is use promotion to get them interested. Yeah. As you can see, if you will gonna notice, kailan ba nakakatch yung attention mo in social media? Sometimes if there is a buy one take one. Correct? Yeah. When it comes to promos, consumers prefers to buy buy but uh, prefer buy one get one. If you have the marketing budget to spare, take part in such promos. Yeah, that's the recommendation we grab, of course. But we're just getting the details, the, the statistics that they have. The number three, this is very real. Put together great compost. Like um we just had a uh, few days our uh, our meeting the top food that we're gonna have mostly are the uh, the combos for example we have a western food that is a combined of three food i uh, three meat and three veggies in one tray so that's our top peak food yeah so combo sets are proven strategy to increase basket size so when you are creating something for your restaurant yeah, that's the strategy and can grow the number of items ordered by 50% include items that are usually bought together in your combo set. Top three preferred add-ons by Filipinos, drink, dessert, and appetizer. So that's a good strategy already. Number four, a short menu is a better menu. As you can see, kapag sobrang daming choices ng menu, well, they people tend to get uh, tired looking for it. Make your food look great. Yeah. Uh, Gen Z, Instagrammable food, diba? You are more attracted when the food is very Instagrammable. Food items with photos saw so a two times increase in orders compared to items without. 
make your food sound great too. Yung fried chicken, crispy fried chicken, which is true, wherein we've seen in a lot of fast food chain, the bam. The number seven, send out great meals on time. Yeah. So that's an under grab. So next one is. What does the future of F and B look like? Okay, so this is one of the main points I'm really interested to share with you. Understanding the trends and innovations you can leverage. So next. Okay, right now, this is very important. Stand out with digital marketing. As you can see, successful brands, successful uh, concepts because they have a successful digital marketing. These days, digital savvy people in the Philippines mainly discover new restaurants through food delivery apps, also in Instagram, in Facebook. Investing in this digital platform will help you reach out more people, which is true also. As you can see, aside from Grab, there's a lot more. Itigo. Um, there's a different more apps um, that that we are using now. Okay, more food business are using Grab ads to drive greater awareness for Grab. Yes. So next one. So the first one is digital marketing. So that's the future in F and B. So if you have a good visualization, you have a um, competitive digital strategy marketing strategy, mostly your concept will be successful. So next. This one. So what pan, What the other thing that the pandemic uh, contributed in the trend of food and beverage is scaling with cloud kitchens. There are so many concepts right now that is through cloud kitchen. You don't have a physical store, but there's a cloud kitchen. Cloud kitchen house several F and B businesses under one roof. This helps businesses focus more on the food delivery and run their operation without needing their own physical store. Because of the high demand on the delivery, okay, so people try the cloud kitchen already. Okay. So that's the second one, the second trend. Third trend, which is true. <laughs> most of the details that they shared, most of the details they shared, it's because of the, it's because of the, most of the details they shared are more on the grab, but I believe on what they shared that on the trend. This is what we are going through right now in the food and beverage industry scene. Number three is going green in good, is good for business. As you can see, many restaurants are now um, connected with their uh, with their purpose. Like uh, one one main company or best best illustration of this is the Starbucks, right? How they re reduce the use of the plastics, how they wanted it be, to be going green. But also aside from that, the going green of the in the food and beverage industry is about being healthy also yeah so that's the two things in being going green so consumer close to seven in ten consumer wants to reduce waste which is true so if if you try to analyze if you're going to buy something in a restaurant no sometimes you don't like the takeaway uh things that they offer to you and just hold your cup yeah, ako ganun eh. Ayaw na naman kung ano-anong pinaglalagyan nila. So, I will just get my cup to reduce the waste. Tama. Tapos, F&B business. 9 in 10 F&B merchants are concerned about their environmental issues, which is true. So, let me just share dito. We recognize that the rising popularity of food deliveries presents unique challenge to the problem of plastic pollution. So, si Grab naman ay committed in innovating sustainable packaging solutions. Okay? So, next. So, number three is going green. That's the trend right now. Yeah. 
this one is the what I'm sharing earlier, the digital revolution. Um, digital payments are now a mass have. Um, I think the research the other last week that Gcash, mostly 70 to 80 percent of our population are Gcash, ha are having Gcash already. So that's a mass. 2020 pandemic uh, when uh, pre-pandemic. We are not digital savvy. We are into cash. Everything is like cash. And only few are using credit cards. But right now, digital payments are a must. Um, halos lahat ng mga restaurant na pinupuntahan ko. You can pay through GCash. You can pay through credit card. There are so many digital payments. Yeah. They, we also have Leica gems. You can pay through the gems, di ba? So that's a digital revolution. Paying by e-wallet is the second most preferred method after cash. Actually, yeah, we did the meeting the other day also. Parang sixty uh, percent cash, but then of course, but imagine the the jump. Ngayon nasa forty percent is digital payments na siya. We're in twenty nineteen, ninety five percent cash yung ano namin payment method namin. So in this COVID-19 environment, digital payments also help elim eliminate the physical exchange of money and reduce the risk of virus exposure, making it safer for businesses to handle daily financial transactions while offering convenience to consumers. Yeah. So I think that's, let me see the next one for the Grab presentation. So that's the four trends. Ah, uh, this one. So for those who are watching this one, who wanted to start their their business in food and, and beverage, uh, they shared also this success sandwich. Time to grow your appetite and consumer base. So number one that they share is that try introducing some kid-friendly dishes into your menu to cater to young families. Yes. So number two, consider incorporating food trends into your menu by introducing limited time offers of, or seasonal menu items. And number three, try promoting food with organic, natural ingredients and less salt, sugar, oil, and communicate the number of calories in food items where possible to appeal to the health conscious. Yeah. Number four, bundle food orders with side salads, sandwiches. These are the strategies that you can do already. Bundles for food orders with side salads, sandwiches, or smoothies as consumer. Think of these foods are as healthier and will be willing to pay more, which is true. So win over home cooks, offer items that consumer love, by which are difficult to replicate at home. So if you are if you wanted to start something new for your restaurant or if you want to open a restaurant, so those are the key things that you can do. Share content around safety, protocols and ingredients, quality to build consumer trust. Number eight, run by yes. You know, as you can see, opening when when there are new restaurants in the in the city, try to check some they always Lahat, but a lot of times they will gonna have buy one get one promos on their first day <laughs> and and Filipinos like that so they will gonna line up just for that Ganon. so share positive reviews on social media to encourage consumers to order from you yes number 10 of course since presentation Tony grab use grab marketing solution no but but i believe in this you hunger for success appetite for experimentation never give up attitude for when when you are in this industry yeah next Okay, I'll just share this one na lang if, if for for as a uh, no, reference lang. Um, ensure to have lower well, price items. Introduce combos with per best performing dishes for drinks. Clear. These are the trends that you can do. 
Yeah. So for drinks, clear uh, trends and strategies that you can do if you are in food and beverage industry. For drinks, clearly indicate the brand, include photos, include description, keep the menu short, consider uh, reducing menu items, always check the meals are accurately packed when, when packing foods, especially those with leak, ensure they are well sealed. Yeah. So those are some reminders when, when you are running the uh, restaurant or the food and in a beverage industry scene. So ingredients for this, agility, collaboration, collaboration with other brands, sponsors, they are very important. And then always wanting to improve. Every month, we always have those meetings. What are the things that we could improve on the, from last month? So that we keep on growing, we keep on uh, uh, improving on the things that 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 we we forgot or we neglect yeah next uh that's the last at that no for the grab okay so we go back with 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 my presentation okay so there these are the few words uh that i wanted you to, to try to answer or to try to reflect. Uh, this These are the reminders if you really wanted to become an entrepreneur. Yeah. First is that when you are, when you wanted to open a business, when you wanted to become an entrepreneur, don't chase the paper, chase the dream. Yes, um, hindi naman, hindi ko naman dream talaga na magkaroon ng maraming restaurants or we open a different brands, but it's my dream to help the people. It's my dream. Uh, it became an inspiration for me to dream that in the future, I will be able to, to give more, uh, more, uh, more work for, for, for many Filipino employees. Actually, masaya, masaya to be in a community, to be in a company, na family talaga ang turingan ninyo. So don't chase the paper, chase the dream. Next one is, if you want, this, this is the question that you can ask yourself. If you, if, since mga students pa kayo, if you wanted to go straight to entrepreneur or opening business or if you want to work first, what would you what would you be passionate about doing for the 10 years, even if you never made a dime? I can see myself still searching for different brands of restaurants, eating in different restaurants for the next 10 years and, and trying to execute the 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 ideas that I got. <laughs> yeah. So then so what's the larger vision and greater purpose in their work beyond ma sorry, beyond money or profits? So, um I think this one I let me share with you. The company culture and employee happiness are sustainable means to having business of profits, passion, and purpose. Yeah. So in doing your business, if you started already, if you're an entrepreneur already, sometimes the next question for, for us is that what's the larger vision? What's the greater purpose in doing this? Yeah. And lastly, so that will end my my talk, my presentation. I hope you learn a few things from my experience of opening the company, the challenges I shared, and some key things from Grab for the trends in food and beverage industry scene. And I would like to share with all of you, business should exist as a force to make the world a better place. Thank you very much, everyone. And so there you have it. Again, thank you. Thank you very much for that very, very inspiring talk, Miss Marilyn Sebastian. Truly, this is a very inspirational day for each and every one of us, for everybody who's actually listening in this talk. 
and to the hundreds and thousands actually right now who are actually, actually watching in FB Live. Again, we would like to thank Ms. Marilyn Sebastian, the Managing Director of SEB Connection Incorporated. Again, ma'am, walang hanggang pasasalamat po sa inyong lahat. But again, we are now on the most exciting part wherein we are bringing back Ms. Marilyn with us. Hi, Ms. Marilyn. Hi. Hi, ma'am. Maraming pong salamat. Lahat pa po kami is on, on the verge of really ang an laki ng ngiti namin no, because, of that, eh, because of that very inspiring talk. And hindi pa tayo nagtatapos doon, ma'am. Is it okay for us to ask you a few questions regarding, regarding your experiences? Yeah. Let's go. Maraming salamat. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Marilyn. Okay. Ma'am, there are a few questions from our... Uh, from our uh, listeners right now. And of course, some are from the professors and some are from the uh, DHM students themselves. No, The first question actually that we would like to ask you is what strategies you took to be able to continue your business from the hard lockdown to this time that we experienced less strict protocols? Yun po, ma'am. Okay, strategies with the able to continue the business actually um um your name again sorry abram, abram. Abram. you know abram no what's the good thing during the pandemic is that the camaraderie mm -hmm. of filipino entrepreneurs during yeah. the pandemic time um walang madamot everyone is sharing because the uh, the key for 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 the businesses during that time is the survival so mm -hmm. during the pandemic time, everyone is sharing what they are doing. So mm -hmm. actually, um, uh, during the pandemic time, um, when when we are trying to navigate what can we do in different area to survive, that's the key, to survive lang. Uh, the good thing, there's so many, like for the uh, Philippine uh, Franchise Association, they always have like a pihan, where in different mm -hmm. companies share the strategies. So, mm -hmm. for example, we have this, like, uh, they shared, which is very key and very detailed on what you can do in order to survive. They shared the COVID-19 Enterprise Resiliency Framework, now, uh -huh. next, and beyond. Actually, I wanted to include it in the presentation. Ko kanina. However, we're going back. Na eh. But it's a good mm -hmm. thing that they asked the, the things we did on how to survive. The first thing is that I will be technical with this one. The first mm -hmm. thing is that you focus on the employee health and well-being. Okay. Because that's one of the key. Most of the during the during uh, the pandemic, uh, the businesses are employees, so they mm -hmm. have shared the key things what to do during for for to improve or to to address the employee health and well-being. And then you focus also the talent and workforce, the strategy to do during the pandemic on the workforce on with the protocol, how we will gonna how we will gonna strategize our manpower during that time. The next one that they shared is the customer safety and brand protection. So everyone was so uh, hesitant to order, baka may virus to, baka meron tong ganito. But that's the reason why you need to focus and emphasize the customer safety and brand protection during that time. Then, uh, one thing, um, this is actually my presentation, to, hindi ko lang na-share na, but I'll, I'll give the details. No? The next one is the technology and information security. I can say siguro 70% prepared naman ng mga Filipinos or technical savvy tayo, but sometimes I'm sad with the businesses that cannot adapt with the technology. Kasi the, during the pandemic, if you don't know anything or don't know any tools, to be techno, uh, to be digitally involved, malaki yung chance, mamamatay talaga yung business mo. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing that they emphasize that we need to focus on. The insurance and financial recovery, the timeline, and how they they are telling everyone it's about survival. Mm -hmm. With this, it's very important that we coordinate to the, our partners. Like for example, uh, mostly uh, I do have restaurants. So yung mga, yung mga lesser, the bigger companies, how will you negotiate with them? 
actually i'm very thankful a lot of our bigger companies were very supportive during that time many mm -hmm. ways many gave discounts on the on the on the rental so that made the 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 food and beverage industry survive mm -hmm. yeah i think um this is a, a a full chart of what we can do so during that time they shared this with all the entrepreneurs who who could have knowledge on what are the steps that we need to do in order to survive and mm -hmm. i think um if i have a time or you could just search for it one memorable that i watched is the collaboration of mcdonald's and the uh, and uh, Jollibee, which is first time in the history that in one commercial they yeah. collaborate. Yeah, if yeah. you watch that one, they mm -hmm. collaborate, and this is the first time their head and head collaborate to fight the COVID nineteen during that mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. so, so. Miss Marilyn, talaga na papa smile ako, no? Alam mo, looking back, looking back in all of those. Uh, What's this challenges that we had? And this is very unexpected. I really, let's ponder into that. Everyone really, literally uh, came as one, right? Yes. Bayanihan is everywhere. And I agree with you. Parang yes. lahat is nag-usap, not for the sake of their company, but for the sake of our, literally, community, the people yes. who are displaced, di ba? And then, paano tayo makakabalik? Right? Like right now, di ba? PW from the start of the pandemic until this moment that we are on the recovery period, sustainability period, hindi nagkulang si PW sa paggawa ng katulad ng ganito, right? Ng, uh, ng free webinar series. Not because of anything else, but because we would like to help our industry. Because at the end of the day, our products, our students are from the industry, right? And I agree on you with that. Health and wellness should be really it should be really sustained no uh it's not really an option right now kung vac kung kung kailangan mo vaccine or hindi parang kasi pag nagpapasok na hindi vaccinated sa sa company mo parang it's ano na no no uh tawag dito uh you know go mo na kagad yung risk no ng company so i really really felt that uh miss marilyn maraming maraming salamat for that uh uh for that uh quest uh, for that answers Ramdam namin talaga na medyo mabigat ang pinagdaanan ng inyong company. Yes. You, you know, hindi lang ako. Lahat ng nasa restaurant or food and beverage industry. Yeah, I was so sad. Pag nakikita ko, may mga nakikita akong outlets or restaurants na nagko-close down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but yun nga, hindi, uh, but I can feel it. Siguro hindi lang sa restaurant or food and beverage business, but in other mm -hmm. businesses also, the much of much affected uh, aside from us. Pero a lot of it, kasi makikita mo talaga restaurant, nag-close to, nag-close to. Really? You will be sad. Mm -hmm. yeah, so mm -hmm. during pandemic time, I think the camaraderie and sharing information on how you will survive is very important. Yes, I agree on that, Miss Marilyn. Maraming maraming salamat, no? Uh, we really need to, when, if this will happen again, yun lang naman yung natutunan natin, eh. That's the key to survive, to come as one, right? Wala nang companies, wala nang, it's, it's all about the economy, it's all about the community, it's all about the people, no? Doon lumalabas talaga yung pagiging Pilipino natin. Maraming maraming salamat for answering that question, ma'am. I have another two questions for you, no? Second question is, um, how can we keep delivering happiness through FNB in spite of minimal guest encounter, especially during the pandemic? Tunay okay. na naman, right? Yeah. This one, I, I will answer you so short kasi parang ang haba ng mga sagot. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Yeah, I, I think it's an inspiration from um, uh, Zappos' uh, founder, no? Yeah, yeah, he said like this one, people may not remember exactly what you did or what you said, but mm -hmm. they will always remember how you made them feel. Yeah. So even you have few, few encounter. Always, actually, it should always be from our employees. You have that overwhelming joy in your heart that you're satisfied with a company, that you're happy with your colleagues. Mm -hmm. And technically, that one will really make, make the customer or the, the guest uh, feel it. So it's not about the encounter, it's how you made them feel. Yeah. I agree, Miss Marilyn. Usually, usually, we really thought, no, kapag maganda yung property, nung establishment, or yung facade, di ba, people go there. But 
not. I agree with you. Uh, it's all about the effect, the aftermath of experiencing the service. Diba yung maaalala mo sa labi ko, ang bait ng waiter, kilala na ako. Diba kasi usual ako nandiyan. And I, and I agree on that. Passion. It's really passion. No? Uh, passion ng employees to do their job, especially ng pandemic. Thank you so much, Miss Marilyn. It's all about it's all about the experience. Yun lang naman talaga yun eh. And for our last question, Miss Marilyn, uh, how did you overcome all of those hurdles you had during the pandemic? Especially because IATF ordered the shutdown and had some restrictions, heavy restrictions, on your workers and services. Yeah, I think that's a good question for the from the first question. But um, mm -hmm. we overcome it from different areas, like yung yung rope, yung yung strategy that that other entrepreneurs shared with us when it comes to our employees, uh, when it comes to the how we handle the business partners, how we handle our our innovation for the for delivering our our food in the in our customers yeah the technology adaptation mm -hmm. those things and from there um siguro one word lang eh we need to really adopt yeah whatever is the protocol whatever yeah. is needed the the all the things the technology whatever is needed dapat maka-adapt ka so, so i think we survived because we were able to adapt Totoo, Ms. Marilyn, yun nga daw yung most used word nung pandemic <laughs> two years. You yes. need to adopt. We don't have any other choice than to adopt, right? Ms. Marilyn, may question pa pala sa inyo because they are really enjoying your company right now. Is it okay to add two more questions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just very, very few na lang po. Ms. Marilyn, this is, the, this is another question. What, is your, what are your secrets or what is your secret in keeping your EQ at high level, especially in venturing into businesses, which is very risky? Yeah. Well, actually, um, secrets in keeping my EQ, I will going to share it more on personally. Because yeah. um, the question is how you will become a strong person. Mm -hmm. There are different sources, of course. One, one, of course, right now, since this is entrepreneur, the driving force will be business. But at the end of it, your emotional co quotient, your mental health will always depend the source. Source yeah. could be, siempre, your family. Yeah, you mm -hmm. have a good uh, relationship with your family because through hard times, sila yung talagang susupport sa'yo. Yeah. Then, second one is that how, how you treat yourself. You should know what do you want in life? You should know what made you content in life. You should know uh, the things that you want to do more. If you're very, um, if you really know yourself, technically your emotional quotient will go high. Because <laughs> that's very important. You don't do things because you just need to do it. You do it through your passion. Remember the last few slides that I shared earlier, it's about your passion and your purpose. If you're very determined with your passion and your purpose, that will go with everything. And technically, your emotional quotient, your passion to drive things will be really high. <laughs> that I agree. That I agree with Marilyn. Uh, your passion will actually see you through, right? It's, and... You need to be really, what I get on that particular uh, uh, answer is that you need to be very mindful and very present, no? Uh, whenever challenges are on your way, right? Yeah. You just need to align yourself. And uh, kahit gano naman kahirapan challenges, eh, when you have the passion for it, you will survive. Thank you, Ms. Marilyn. And we have last one question. I think this is the last one. No? Okay. Enjoy po kasi yung mga listener, uh, listeners, yung mga viewers natin today. And they keep on on giving good questions because they really enjoy your company. Um, the last question is actually just as simple as this. What are your important tips or tip on an, for an, an uh, aspiring entrepreneur? Okay. First is that you need to be happy. Happy mm -hmm. in doing that thing. Happy in doing that entrepreneurship, kung anong product mo, what you sell, you need to be happy. Second is that don't be afraid. Don't fear failure. Mm -hmm. Kasi yan yung nag, uh, nagiging step back na hindi natin gagawin or we will not go 
or enter entrepreneurship because we're afraid baka ayaw nila yung ko, baka mga mm-hmm. yan, hindi naman nila bilhin to. Okay, that's that's fine. Don't overthink as long as there's one who will gonna buy it. Go, proceed. Because you know, growth is inevitable. Growth will come away. Like, um, every day you do another step, a sing- simple step in your business and hindi mo mamamalayan in two years time your road is totally different from where you started yeah that i agree that i agree sometimes especially that this last pandemic no this last two years few years no two and a half years um we really keep on waiting on the day na we all remove our mask that iatf will go down into level one again alert level right tapos we are here right now. Ito na siya, right? And then we are really praying so hard for this. And now we are here already. And I really think that you really just really need to keep the faith. And for that, Miss Marilyn, maraming maraming salamat po for joining us this afternoon. And that is Director Marilyn Sebastian, the Managing Director of SEB Connection Incorporated. I know we want more time with her, but I'm afraid that is the time that we have. Again, thank you, Director Marilyn Sebastian. To thank, of course, we would like to award our certificate of appreciation to our dearest guest speaker, Ms. Marilyn. Okay. May I read the citation? The Philippine Women's University School of Hospitality Management award the certificate of recognition to Ms. Marilyn Sebastian guest speaker for importing her valuable insights and expertise during the virtual webinar entitled Entrepreneurial Strategies and Tools for Sustainable Food Business Operations in the New Normal. On June 17, 2022, from 1 to 4 p.m. via Facebook Live and YouTube Live at the Philippine Women's University, Taft Avenue, Malate, Manila, signed our dearest professor, Ms. Jocelyn R. Sardegna, and of course, the Dean of School of School of Hospitality Management, Dr. Ephraimuel Jose L. Ebelian. Again, Ms. Marilyn Sebastian, maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong tiwala at suporta. Okay, and now, to give his closing message, may we call in the DHM Chair for this event, Mr. Eugene Benita. Sir Eugene, the floor now is yours. Hi, sir. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much uh, to our host, uh, Chef Ibram uh, Peralta. Okay. So, to President Marco Benitez, uh, Dean Prime Abeliana, Dr. Jocelyn Sardenia, thank you. Thank you very much for your guidance and support. Also, we would like to extend our gratitude to our distinguished guest speakers. Mr. Mark Santos of Mark & Co. Events, thank you for sharing some tips and trends with regards to the concepts on how businesses can cope with adversities such as the COVID-19 pandemic. Indeed, we still have a long road to cope, but a person like you is such an inspiration that we are resilient and motivated enough to face it. And to our second speaker, Ms. Marilyn Sebastian of the SEB Group Connection, thank you for your talk on the challenges that enterprises experienced during the pandemic and how to overcome it. Thank you as well for also motivating us and inspiring us to venture into businesses. To the organizers of this event, the Advanced Entrepreneurial Management students, maraming maraming salamat po. Thank you for all your hard work in making this event possible. And to our dear participants from around the globe, our gratitude for spending your precious time in joining us here. And we hope that you have learned something and somehow inspire you to venture and wake up your entrepreneurial spirits. So on behalf of the organizing team, I am now formally closing this webinar. Maraming maraming salamat at mabuhay po tayong lahat. 
Thank you again, Sir Eugene. And we would also like to thank our very own advisor, as Sir Eugene said, Dr. Jocelyn Sardenia. This webinar is not possible without your exceptional guidance of moving forward in excellence. Maraming maraming salamat po sa panahon at suporta, Dr. Sardenia. And of course, to the leadership of our very passionate webinar chairman, Mr. Eugene Benita, and to the rest of our hardworking team of DHM class under the subject Advanced Entrepreneurial Management. Of course, flash on screen right now is the QR code for the evaluation for today's webinar and event. The same link is now being added in the chat box in the Facebook Live as we speak. We highly appreciate your feedback on this webinar. This will also be the basis for sending of our participants individual e-certificates. Our evaluation team shall update you via email for the said certificates and flash also on screen is the sample of the certificates or e-certificates that you would be receiving after the completion of the evaluation. In case of any follow-up with, with this or regarding your e-certificates, please contact the email address being shown on screen. Okay, so thank you again, everyone, to our dearest participants coming from Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. And of course, to the rest of the world, we really appreciate you being here today. We really hope that you have enjoyed and absorbed all the learnings and discussions we had this afternoon to our dearest guest speakers for the shared insights. On behalf of our organizing team, we extend our dearest gratitude for your participation and live presence in this webinar. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, I am Chef Abram Emmanuel Peralta, and together with the PW Doctors of Hospitality Management students, we wish you good health, long life, and we are always at your service. Now it's time to sing the PWU hymn.